Have you ever wondered how religions came to be and how they evolved over time? Let's explore the fascinating journey through history to uncover the origins and transformations of the world's major religions. Imagine the earliest days of human existence. Around 2.5 million years ago, people saw the world as alive with spirits and animals, plants, rocks, and even natural events like thunderstorms. This belief system, called animism, helped early humans explain the world around them and feel connected to it. As human societies grew more complex, shamanism emerged. Shamans were special individuals believed to have the ability to communicate with the spirit world. They performed rituals to heal the sick, ensure successful hunts, and influence the weather. This was the beginning of structured religious practices. Fast forward to around 4000 BCE in ancient Mesopotamia, where the first written records of organized religion appeared. The Sumerians worshipped multiple gods, each overseeing different aspects of life like the sun, the moon, fertility, and war. Temples were built, and priests played a crucial role in society, managing religious ceremonies and rituals. Around 2000 BCE, we see the emergence of Hinduism in the Indus Valley. Hinduism is one of the oldest religions still practiced today. It introduced complex rituals, a pantheon of gods and goddesses, and sacred texts like the Vedas and Upanishads. Hinduism's concepts of karma, dharma, and reincarnation have influenced many other religions and philosophies. In Egypt, around the same time, the ancient Egyptians were developing their own complex religious system. They worshipped gods like Ra, the sun god, and Osiris, the god of the afterlife. The construction of massive pyramids as tombs for pharaohs was deeply connected to their beliefs in the afterlife and the journey of the soul. Moving forward to around 1500 BCE, Zoroastrianism emerged in Persia or modern-day Iran. Founded by the prophet Zoroaster, this religion introduced the idea of a single god, Ahura Mazda, and the ongoing battle between good and evil. It influenced later monotheistic religions like Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Speaking of Judaism, it began around 1200 BCE with the ancient Israelites. Judaism introduced the concept of one God, Yahweh, and emphasized moral conduct and social justice as outlined in the Torah. This was a significant shift from polytheistic religions and laid the foundation for Christianity and Islam. Around 500 BCE, two major religions emerged in India, Buddhism and Jainism. Buddhism, founded by Siddhartha Gautama, the Buddha, focused on ending suffering through the Four Noble Truths and the Eightfold Path. Jainism, founded by Mahavira, emphasized nonviolence, truth, and asceticism. In China, Confucianism and Taoism took shape around the same time. Confucianism, founded by Confucius, emphasized ethics, family loyalty, and social harmony. Taoism, attributed to Lao Tzu, encouraged living in harmony with the Tao, or the fundamental nature of the universe. Christianity emerged in the first century CE with the teachings of Jesus Christ. It spread rapidly throughout the Roman Empire and beyond, emphasizing love, forgiveness, and eternal life through faith in Jesus. The Bible became the sacred text for Christians, and the religion eventually split into various denominations. Islam was founded in the 7th century CE by the Prophet Muhammad in Arabia. The Quran, believed to be the word of God as revealed to Muhammad, became the holy book. Islam spread quickly across the Middle East, North Africa, and parts of Europe and Asia, bringing with it a message of monotheism, charity, and social justice. In the modern era, new religious movements have emerged, such as Sikhism in the 15th century in India, which combines elements of Hinduism and Islam. The Baha'i Faith, founded in the 19th century in Persia, promotes unity and peace among all people. Let's dive into some fascinating connections between religions and clear up some common misunderstandings. So, did you know that almost every major religion has a story about a great flood? In Judaism and Christianity, we have Noah's Ark. Noah builds a huge boat to save his family and animals from a massive flood sent by God. Islam has a similar story about Prophet Nuh, Noah, who also saves people and animals from a flood. And in Hinduism, there's the tale of Sage Manu, who is warned about a big flood and saves key things to restart life. These stories all symbolize new beginnings and significant changes. Now, let's talk about how different religions handle idols. Hindus use idols to focus their prayers, like having a photo of a loved one to feel close to them. 
it's not the idol itself that's worshipped, but what it represents. Christians use symbols like crosses to remind them of their faith, but it's not the symbol itself they worship, it's what the symbol represents. Islam avoids images and idols entirely, focusing worship directly on God without any physical representations. Moving on to Abrahamic religions. Judaism, Christianity, and Islam are called Abrahamic because they all trace their roots back to Abraham. Judaism begins with Abraham and his God, Yahweh. Christianity builds on Judaism with Jesus Christ, who Christians believe fulfills Old Testament prophecies. Islam adds Muhammad, seen as the last prophet in this line. So these religions are like spiritual cousins, all connected through Abraham. When it comes to karma and the afterlife, many religions have ideas about how our actions impact our future. In Hinduism, Buddhism, and Jainism, karma means that good actions lead to positive outcomes and bad actions lead to negative ones, either in this life or the next. Christianity talks about heaven and hell, where your actions determine your afterlife destination. Both concepts stress the importance of living a good life. Despite different beliefs, many religions share similar values like kindness, fairness, and love. They all encourage people to live well and care for each other. In Islam, some people misinterpret Quranic verses to justify violence. For example, the verse, kill them wherever you find them, Quran, chapter 2, verse 191, is often quoted out of context. This verse was revealed during a specific historical conflict and was meant as guidance for those situations, not a blanket directive for violence. Islam's core teachings actually emphasize peace. The Quran also states, if you kill one person, it is as if you have killed all of humanity. Quran, chapter 5, verse 32, which highlights the value of life and the importance of peace. In Christianity, there are verses that have been misused, like, if your right eye causes you to sin, gouge it out. Matthew, chapter 5, verse 29. Some interpret this literally, but it's meant metaphorically to emphasize avoiding sin rather than promoting self-harm. Another verse, slaves, obey your earthly masters. Colossians, chapter 3, verse 22, is often misinterpreted to justify slavery. In its historical context, it reflects societal norms of the time, but Christianity's core message is about love and equality, as seen in Love Your Neighbor as Yourself, Mark chapter 12, verse 31. In Judaism, verses like Kill the Witches, Exodus chapter 22, verse 18, and when the Lord your God has delivered it into your hands, put to the sword all the men in it, Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 13, have been misinterpreted to justify violence. These verses come from ancient laws and historical contexts. Modern Jewish interpretations emphasize justice and ethical behavior, such as you shall love your neighbor as yourself, Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18, which promotes compassion and respect. In Hinduism, some texts have been misinterpreted to justify discrimination. For example, verses like the Shudra, whose duty is to serve, is considered the lowest. Manasamriti, chapter 10, verse 126, have been misused to enforce rigid caste boundaries. Originally, the Verna system was meant to categorize people based on their duties rather than birth. Over time, this system evolved, and the idea of fixed social classes became outdated. In modern Hinduism, teachings such as the soul is neither born, nor does it die, Bhagavad Gita, chapter 2, verse 20, emphasize the inherent dignity and equality of all individuals. So, while religious texts can sometimes be misinterpreted, understanding their broader context helps us see that they often share common values of peace, compassion, and respect for life. As we've seen, religion has been a major force in shaping our world. From early animism to today's big religions, every belief system has influenced and been influenced by its followers. Despite their differences, many religions share common themes of love and moral guidance, reflecting our shared human quest for meaning and a better life. Found his video helpful? If so, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to Not Just Rich for more great content and hit the bell icon for updates.